to improve the visibility of your information and remove the repetitive data entry and significantly reduce the cost. So now we are going to run the presentation by Swen. And just a very important thing, if you have any question during the presentation, please type them into the question box in your control panel. I'll bring them up during the presentation and we will also have time for question and answer at the end. So I request you all to please keep your mic muted and the video disabled during the presentation. Mm -hmm. I hope you all are able to hear us properly and see the screen. So now, without further ado, we will turn the time over to presenter Swan. So Swan, now over to you, please. Yeah. Thank you, Asad. Um, yeah, good, good afternoon to all of you and, and thank you for having me here today. Um, it's great to be able to present to you and talk to you about business process automation in what Assad has already said in this really quite unprecedented time that we've been living in for the last <clears throat> four or five months. Um, I want to spend the next 20 minutes talking to you about automation really as a topic and as a to give you some some food for thought rather than this being a, a software demo as such. Um, so as Assad has already said, we, we're a UK based company. We work with, with many clients in different channels so people that are using SAP, they're using Microsoft, using Sage, who want to automate business processes, who want to work more efficiently and work work smarter um, in, in good times and in bad really. So what I want to talk to you about is, is the factors that drive businesses towards automation and what automation can do for your company, give you some examples and actually also talk to you about the return on investment because it's not sometimes as easy as you know it's it takes me five hours to do something and i save that money there's different things to think about i also want to give you a very quick introduction into our, our software our solution to some of these automation challenges and there is um a handout that will be sent to you off the back of this which talks about building an automation strategy and like Assad has already said we are more than happy to take questions at the end of this presentation and yeah please type them into the chat as we go through this so when we when i prepared for this webinar we <clears throat> were thinking about you know why would why would businesses automate and there's always been reasons to automate even before coronavirus um, but i suppose coronavirus really has given us all many many challenges but actually also many many opportunities depending on what what sector you're in i suppose so what we where we started with this was to look at a, a pest analysis, we call it, which is a you know political, economic, social, and technological reasons as to why why people are looking at automation, why people are looking at working differently. So, so looking at the political landscape, I don't think has ever been like this. To be honest, um, you you're all in the Middle East. I'm I'm over here in the UK, but I I was in Dubai only five months ago. And I know that Dubai, particularly in the Middle East, is um, very much a hub for business and a hub for tourism and a transient place where people come and people spend time and money. Um, and, and actually, there's a real potential problem here with the restricted travel that's going on around the world at the moment and, and the fact that, that people are not traveling for business so much now. So this might get some business thinking about, you know, actually, we, we might not have the level of business we had before or we might not attract the number of visitors we had. The economy might shrink because of that. So that's certainly a factor why people look at automation. There's friction between all of the trading blocks at the moment. Um, I, I'm not so quite so sure about the Middle East, but certainly USA are doing a, the best job of alienating everyone in the world. Um, China is not everyone's friend now at the moment because of coronavirus. Um, Europe and and the UK are as friction. So many businesses are having to think how to source products and goods differently, having to think about where they sell their products. It's, it's a really tricky time, actually. From an eco economic point of view, there's a, a, a global recession. It's, it's probably on, on, on the hands. I saw today, I don't know the Middle East figures, but the UK economy shrunk by 20%. The French economy shrunk by 20%. Um, there's going to be tax rises. People are going to spend less money and there's, there will be unemployment for sure um, in the next year. I think it'll be quite an interesting year coming up. And actually the implications of self-isolation, you know, if you have labor, 
if you had 100 members of staff and you're managing to run your business with 100 members of staff, if two people get coronavirus, all of a sudden everyone has to isolate and maybe not work. Um, I think that, that's quite tricky. And from a social point of view, um, I think everyone has just changed the way that we consume products and services now. You know, the, the, we, the way we go to restaurants, the way we go to bars, the way we go shopping. A lot of it's online. Um, so we, we stay at home more, we, we work at home more. So very interesting. From a technology point of view, a big increase in people going online and using that technology. And actually for a lot of you there using SAP Business One, you know, there's, there's a big opportunity here to use automation because your SAP Business One is already an, an amazing ERP platform. But actually, if you surround it with other software, you know, whether that's an e-commerce platform, a CRM system, a customer portal, or, or other systems using technology like this, you can actually make SAP Business One even better by, by having a really holistic solution in, in place. So, so that's the, the landscape that we, we live in at the moment. Um, and, the, and these factors, they're going, to, they're going to have an impact on how businesses trade and how they will result, right? So basically you're going to have higher levels of competition. There's going to be more people buy, more people um, selling online. There's going to be less people spending money. So you're going to have more competition. We might have less products on the market. People that are selling products might have less profit margins. A lot of business will be online and all of a sudden the way we treat our customers and the customer experiences is going to be absolutely critical and um, we're going to have to make sure that that's standardized and we're going to make sure that actually our systems are doing the work for us rather than people so in short the businesses are going to have to do more with less resource or and in a different way so these are some of the things that um, automation can do for my company. You, it might increase your product margins because you, it costs you less time and money to, to serve a client. Um, you can ensure compliance. You can improve your cash flow if you automate the credit control. You could cut administration, um, you know, manual data re-entry, uh, creation of reports, um, automated letters to customers, you have better audit trails, and actually. I think a sad touch on it earlier, a much higher visibility of critical information in your business because you're bringing all of these businesses together, all of these systems together. So you're actually able to see when things are about to go wrong. You know, for example, tell me when a project's within 10% of budget, send me an email, tell me when I'm running out of stock, tell me when my customers are renewing. So actually, that automation can help you retain your customers. It can help you uh, make sure that you don't sell to people that owe you lots of money. Um, things like that are really important at this, this critical time. From a customer point of view, you can actually reduce the order fulfillment times and you can really improve the customer experience. You know, everyone is looking to hear, like Amazon, I'm sure it's the same for you, the Amazon experience where you know, they do an amazing job of how you buy, how you get served, how you return your products. It's all about communication and customer experience and automation can really help you do that. You know, it will cost you a lot less to serve your customers if you automate some of the critical processes and you should reduce the errors in the order processing and get much better satisfaction levels when you're, um, when you're dealing with your clients, okay? So when we talk about automation, I wanted to give you just one example process of how much automation can be in one process. Now, I talk, I'm talking a lot about e-commerce at the moment. It's because that's where a lot of our work is at the moment. Lots of clients are going online. Lots of businesses are using, starting to use a different platform. And it's, there's a real emphasis now on how do I sell my products online or how do I provide my service online? So if we look at a, an an e-commerce, an order. So if one of us goes on a website and we place an order, um, it arrives at our house, lots of things happen in between there. And for some businesses, lots of this will still be manual, okay? So if I go on a website, on any one of your websites to, to buy something, um, the order comes down, you will need to put that order into your SAP Business One system, okay? That could be a manual process. You need to update the warehouse. That could be a manual process. 
you need to upload it to whoever's going to ship that product, whether that's uh, FedEx, whether that's UPS, whether that's one of the local carriers. So that could be a manual process. And you need to tell your customer at every single point that that has happened, okay? So your, your client by this point will have probably wanted to have three notifications. I've got your order, it's in the warehouse, it's being shipped. You need to reconcile the bank, that could be manual. Now that we are selling online and we want to maximize every client that we have, we should create an account and an activity in our, in our CRM system so that we can upsell the client or we can retain them. We need to place orders with our suppliers. So I had a client here in the UK who was buying plastic gloves from China. If they didn't place an order with their supplier at a certain point, they may not get that shipment from China, which means their supply chain doesn't work anymore. They're four weeks behind. We can create purchase orders, we can create pick lists, that's all manual as well. Um, and as people buy more online, there's going to be more returns. So you need to be able to offer your clients a way of digitally being informed about their returns and logging their returns and sending them back. And, and also collecting customer feedback. Okay, so probably in one small process, there's maybe 10 to 15 points of automation where you can speed this process up, where you can reduce the errors, and where you can really start saving some, some really good time and money actually. So these are some of our own customers. We, 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 we sell through partners, 90% through partners uh, like WMS Software, um, but we have a few direct clients here and we've used them as case studies. So there was a, a client here in the UK who has, um, they, they rent out uh, equipment for, for building sites and they were merging two different companies and they had lots and lots of manual processes and they really wanted to improve that process. So they put in VPA um, and they, they automated that process um, uh, and actually they've saved about 100 hours a month in time just by automating some of these processes. It's really improved the hiring process and they, they definitely tell us it's contributed to their growth, actually, and they've changed their philosophy to automation, but that's two man weeks, that's half a man month uh, saved on automation. We've got IQ Geo, is a technology company, again, here in the UK. What they had is that they, they actually they set up a new company, but they had five systems um, that didn't talk to each other. So actually, th th there are significant issues with data processing, whether that's sales orders, project management, reporting. And what they wanted to do is they wanted to automate the sales orders and reporting process. And um, they didn't give us how many hours they saved, but their data management was much better. Um, they had access to data across the whole business. And that's that point of, you know, take your SAP business one as the source of truth bring in other data from other systems to give you in the, in the management positions or in, in whatever position you're in really, a 360 degree view of your business or your customer, whatever it is that you're trying to see. Um, so yeah, lots of, lots, lots of benefits there. For over technology, now they don't use SAP as well actually, but it's a really interesting process there that they, wanted to link their finance system with their CRM system. So they, they needed to take orders out of, um, I think it was out of the ERP and out of the CRM system into ERP from a fulfillment point of view. And they also needed to take invoice figures back into, into the CRM system. So again, they improved that process of orders, uh, much better efficiency and um, it actually, acted for them as a way of all of a sudden being able to offer online trading to their customers. Um, it's something they couldn't do before until they linked those two systems together. So maybe there's some of you here on this webinar that are thinking, if we could only link that with that, we could do something else. Um, interesting way to think about it. Now, from a return on investment, it's easy for us to say, you know, if that if I have one person doing a process for three hours a week, I save three hours of wages when the reality is you're probably still going to be paying that person anyway. So 
think of <clears throat> the return on investment for automation as so we've come up with six different ones that uh that our clients talk to us about all the time one is one is the opportunity cost if you automated some menial repetitive data entry tasks for example um could that free up that time for your staff to do something else we should use people to do the things that people do best which is to innovate to show empathy with each other to build relationships to to talk to customers to talk to suppliers to to build relationships to innovate and let computers do the menial data entry reporting tasks that's what they're there for okay and so give that some thought all the trails in your industries is there anything from a compliance point of view you know if uh, so here in the uk we have data, data regulation laws called gdpr but you know do you need to prove that you're doing certain things at certain times um automation could be great for that when you're integrating data or collating data many businesses are very very nervous about security at the moment so taking data out in csv files um pl placing them on network drives having them emailed around the business is a significant security risk so actually automate that and look at the impact of something not being done if you know certain code is not entered into an invoice it, does it prevent that from being paid if you haven't got a project code can we uh, start a, can we start a project if we you know there's all sorts of different reasons if if there are certain bottlenecks within your business look at automating that so you're not reliant on people and i think the biggest one here for me is standardization okay so if you have a business of 100 people and you were doing 100 orders a day of your product and goods if you all of a sudden did a thousand orders a day would your business still run in the same way could you cope if two of your people catch coronavirus and all of a sudden you're down to 20 people for three weeks could your business still cope and the answer is if you automate some of your key processes and have computers running them then you could okay and you could grow without maybe adding an extra lots of people or you could you could cope so that's a really interesting one and lose, looking at reputation, you know, customer experience is absolutely key. So if you're serving your clients in a consistent manner, in the same way all the time, um, they don't miss any orders, then you, your reputation will mean you rise above the others. And we had a client here, if they lost a half a star of the rating on an e-commerce platform, so it was eBay for them, it, it could have cost them thousands every month. Okay so what do we do we with um, a number of tools that can help you automate some of these processes and wms software we've known them for a long time are trained up on our platform have delivered the platform they would be able to work with you on doing this um but we have integration tools we can automate reports and we've got workflow tools and notifications and alerts so we have a, a product called bpa platform which allows us to link databases and systems together with SAP Business One. We have an SMS engine, which allows us to send SMSs to clients. And we also have a rapid application platform, which allows us to build things like customer portals, uh, approval, approval workflows. And uh, we also have a CRM system that, that can be used and integrated with SAP Business One. Now, from an integration point of view, um, we, we want you to think about SAP Business One as your, 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 your main system, okay? But what you find is that um, basically you will have lots of other systems that are around the, around the outside of, of SAP Business One. Um, so that, you know, it could be like Noon, for example, as, as an e-commerce platform that you want to integrate with SAP Business One or maybe Amazon or souk so these are some of your local erp products over here in the uk we do a lot of work with e-commerce maybe you need to link your crm system to SAP business one whether that's a dynamic crm system or salesforce you maybe you need to do um some payments you know want to integrate world pay or you want to integrate with some marketing platforms or you need to integrate with some of your shipping providers so think of SAP business one as the hub is there any 
other data that needs to be brought into SAP Business One from an automation point of view, we, we can help you with that. Now, the way our product is, is put together is we have um, a, a series of tools, okay? Um, and the tools are there, to, we've got an event tool, which is you know, a starting point to a process, which basically means we trigger a database, we schedule a process, we, we react to an incoming email or a file being placed on a system. Input tools, we get some data from a database or from a file. Um, the format tools allow us to create um, emails, SMS messages, CSV files, XML documents. And then connectors allow us to write back into systems as a SAP Business One. And output allows us to send emails, send SMSs, etc. Okay. Everything is put together in a what we call a task, but it's a process. Now, a lot of you won't need to do this because WMS will do it for you. But essentially, we create business flows between systems. Okay, that look a bit like this. And we then organize all of our different flows in a sort of folder hierarchy, if you like. You know, it could be your your e-commerce processes, your CRM processes, your admin processes, all in different tasks. Um, that's that's what our product looks like. It's, it's proven. We've got 7,000 clients worldwide um, using this product. Also quite, quite a few in the Dubai region, actually. Um, and this is how we map data from A to B. Okay, so not lots of code. It's easier to manage. It's, it's um, nice and straightforward in that respect. And yeah, that's basically an overview of what we do. I hope that's given you some food for thought from a point of view of um, of automation. You know, there's, there's lots to think about. There's lots of opportunity right at this point to use automation as a point of not crisis management, but to but to get ahead because this crisis, like every other crisis, will pass, and then there'll be a boom, and those that get ready now are the ones that are going to lead the charge when we come out of this. Okay, so thank you very much for listening. Um, I hope that's been interesting and it's given you some food for thought. And um, Asad, I don't, I will hand back over to you to, to moderate any questions and answers that we've got. Thank you so much, Sven, and especially for our audience. Now we will go ahead and take some questions. So just a reminder, please be sure to type your questions into the question box in your control panels. It looks like we have some questions. Uh, so soon somebody has asked how long it takes to implement and integrate with any system. Okay, very, okay, very interesting question. Um, obviously, we'll give the answer of it depends. Um, you know, I, I think we, we often find that a um, an integration between an e-commerce platform and SAP Business One, for example, could be anywhere between five to ten days, but it really does depend on you. And it's something for Assad and his team to advise you further. Um, you know, probably, probably Assad is one to take on a one-to-one -one call with a client to understand what, what we're looking to achieve. Sure. So it looks like that nobody has. Any question? <laughs> uh, yeah, somebody has asked, do we need to maintain any separate server for Codeless? Do we need to maintain any, sorry? Any separate server for Codeless? Any separate? Server, any separate any server. Separate server. Um, yes, so BPA, and again, this is up for, for the WMS team to decide how, how it's done. It can be hosted on, on AWS or in a private cloud or it can be put on a server in your business. We do recommend it goes on its own server, depending on what you're doing. But if it's a light load, then it can also go on the same server as this, uh, as SAP Business One. Okay, great. Hope this answer satisfies the question. And we have another question. How is the data integration with ERP system like SAP and Oracle? So do you have separate tools? So there's, there's there's many tools for different systems. We 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 can integrate with any system that has a database, so we can query databases quite easily. And then we have different ways of getting data in and out of 
systems that we maybe haven't worked with before. So we could create XML files that can be consumed by an Oracle system. We could create CSV files that can be consumed by an Oracle system. Or we could actually connect to the REST or SOAP web services that are available for pretty much all of the systems out there at the moment. Okay, great. Hope this satisfied the question as well. And we have a very interesting question, Sven. Somebody has asked, after the implementation, is it possible to change the logic? Yes, it is. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, that's for, you know, again, WMS or for the client to decide how they manage that change. But because of the flexible nature, you're able to go into our tools and, and drill down and change maybe the query, what data you're getting. You can change where that data is rooted. If you, for example, added a user-defined field into SAP Business One because you want to capture some more data, you can do some more data mapping. So you have complete flexibility at the beginning point, but also when you then Perfect. want to make changes later. Perfect. Another interesting question, is it per user license based or a product? How the it, licensing structure works? Um, that's for, um, it, it is per, per process, per task. So one of those tasks I showed you earlier. Um, but that's one for the WMS team then to discuss um, in, in more detail with, uh, with, with each of you. But yes, we, we license per, per task, not per transactions like a lot of people do or per user per process great so the licenses works on per processes and per task so another yeah. question we have is there a provision to come up with specific dashboards for the processes that could be automated mm, interesting question i don't quite know what we're aiming yeah. at what we, what we will look to do is create a front end for our product so that people can see what tasks and processes are running that's in the roadmap if you are talking about presenting data from systems in a dashboard, then I know that the WMS team, Prashant and Venki, uh, are talking about creating some processes around that, yes. Great, and we have another question. Uh, is it possible to integrate with Outlook and SMS integration? With Outlook, it depends what you mean, um, but we have done some integrations with Exchange as a so back office exchange integrations where we are syncing calendars, tasks, and mail. Um, so if that's what you mean, bringing that sort of data across into your finance system or into your CRO system, then yes, that can be done. Um, from an SMS point of view, we are able to take data and dynamically populate SMS messages that can be sent to people's mobile phones. Okay, great. Hope this satisfies the question. Now, another question we have, Sven, uh, somebody is asking how is further enhancements done do we require vendor to come in for enhancement or we can use i mean they can use through their team after a few trainings yes i mean again that's up to how you engage with with Assad, with your team there but um we have many clients that have been trained by you know wms would train you and we have many clients that take ownership of the product and build their own tasks and are very happy doing that. So you aren't necessarily bound by using professional services from a reseller every time. You could own it. Some clients though are very happy for the reseller to own a lot of the professional services work. It depends on what you what setup you've got. Perfect. Hope this satisfied the question. And we have one last question regarding the integration. How okay. secure the integration term? Uh, in terms of the encryption levels? Yeah, I mean, it is encrypted. I, I, I think on a one-to-one -one call, we could give you some more details on that. Um, to put your mind at sure. ease, we do a lot of integrations for clients to sell online. We do a lot of integrations where people are taking financial information from different systems. It is encrypted. The fact that the product sits on your own server behind your firewall, um, we don't store any data, we just take data, processes it, and put it back into another system. So in, in that respect, it's probably as secure as you, you know, could, as, as it can be, because it's not hosted. Often it's hosted within your firewall on, on your own service. Yes, perfect. So it looks like we have covered all the question. Um, sorry, one last question has yeah. come up. Uh, are there integration or interfaces or adapters readily available 
or it needs to be developed based on the backend system? Um, we we have inter interesting question. Yeah, some really good questions here actually. Um, yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there is. We have some readily made adapters to connect to databases, for example, to ODBC or, or, or SQL databases. We have built the SAP Business One connector is a certified connector, um, which exposes the SAP API. Uh, we've done the same for some other systems. But other times, we just connect to the system's API. So there's a bit of configuration needed to talk to that API. Um, so we have a mix of both, really. Okay, hope this satisfies the question. So it looks like we have covered all the questions. Swan, is there anything else you wanted to cover up before no. we wrap up? No, that, that's Great. it. Thank you all for listening and really thank you for some, some extra questions. So, there. Yeah, and most importantly, we will share the PPT with all of you after the webinar. And if you need, we can arrange one-to-one -one detailed session individually. So please feel free to contact us guys. Great. So thank you everyone. You all are amazing. And we appreciate your being here and we'll be having more webinars upcoming for other WMS products as well as the joint ventures. So once again, thank you so much for joining us today and we will see you next time. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.